On today's show, the experts say hack-proof cars are right around the corner. PSA tells General Motors it would love to buy Opal. And China retaliates against South Korea battery makers over an American missile defense system. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The Mercedes G-Wagon is already pretty opulent, but Benz is firing up the Wayback Machine to make it even more extravagant. Meet the Mercedes Maybach G650 Landaulet. Landaulet is a body style that goes back to the horse and buggy days where the back half of the roof folds down. In this case, it's electrically controlled. Inside, passengers are bathed in luxury. A glass partition between the driver's and passenger's compartment keeps the nosy chauffeur out of any indiscreet discussions. The rear seats fully recline with leg rests. There's folding tables and 10-inch display screens. But make no mistake, this vehicle still will be very off-road capable. The four-wheel drive system can be locked in the front, center, and rear, and also features portal axles, which move all the drive components above the wheel centers for more ground clearance. And to power out of those really sticky situations, it comes with a 630 horsepower twin turbo V12. All right, get ready to put your shock face on. A spokesman for PSA, Peugeot and Citroen, told Reuters that it's, and I'm quoting here, exploring a number of strategic initiatives with General Motors with the aim of increasing its profitability and operating efficiency, including a potential acquisition of Opel. The two companies already share production of some SUVs and commercial vans, but this move would give PSA more than a 16% share of the European car market. A deal could be announced within days. Even though General Motors continues to make progress with Opel, it lost $300 million last year. Meanwhile, Ford posted a $1.2 billion pre-tax profit on its European operations, and that has got to goad GM to do something about Opel. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Yen Feng, experience in motion. Yesterday, we reported on Ferrari's financial earnings for 2016, noting that the company made a profit of 53,000 euros on every car it sold. But one of our viewers, Vim Van Acker, pointed out that Ferrari does more than sell cars, and he wanted to know where the company gets all of its revenue. So here goes. Ferrari generated $2.1 billion selling cars and spare parts. It earned 338 million euros selling engines to Maserati and to the Formula One teams, Toro Rosso, Sauber, and Haas. It earned 488 million euros on sponsorships for its own Formula One team and on branding rights for merchandise. And it made 99 million on other operations including financial services. So roughly one-third of all of Ferrari's income comes from operations outside of selling cars to customers. Very interesting article in Wards about Beijing Hyundai dropping the Korean company LG Chem as its battery supplier for its upcoming plug-in hybrid. Instead, it's going to use batteries from a Chinese company called Contemporary Amperex Technology. Wards cites analysts who believe LG Chem and another Korean company, Samsung SDI, were denied battery certification in China because of politics. South Korea agreed to deploy a U.S. anti-missile defense system known by its acronym THAAD, and China is opposed to that deployment. Since then, China slashed the number of visitor visas for South Koreans and stopped several commercial deals involving South Korean companies. China is also actively promoting its domestic companies getting into electrics and plug-ins. Coming up next, cyber experts say that hack-proof cars are right around the corner. 
Yin Feng Automotive Interiors transforms how people experience vehicle interiors by creating the next living space where look, feel, and function are seamlessly integrated. To open the door to tomorrow's vehicle interiors, visit Yen Feng Automotive Interiors at YFAI.com. Whether it's on television, online, or through social media, AutoLine knows how to effectively get your marketing message to the people you want to reach. Contact Stacy Eman today. General Motors is providing the U.S. Congress with some hair-raising statistics to bolster its argument that we need autonomous cars. GM says that 10% of vehicle fatalities and 18% of injuries in crashes are due to distracted driving. That means roughly 3,500 people are killed every year by distracted driving and nearly 400,000 are injured. GM says more than 30% of fatalities involve a drunk driver. That translates into 10,500 fatalities. And it says 28% of fatal crashes were speed related. Vehicle crashes continue to be the leading cause of death for children and adults ages 4 to 34, and 94% of all accidents are caused by human error. Congress is now debating what kind of legislation is needed for autonomous cars. But autonomous cars are not going to be accepted by the public unless we can prevent hackers from taking control of them. Here's the good news. A growing number of technologists believe that hack-proof cars are right around the corner. On our television program, Out of Line This Week, I talked to three technologists at the CES show about cyber technology. Here's what Peter Rawlinson, the CTO of Lucid Motors, had to say about it. You ask, is, is, can a car be hack-proof? I really do believe it can be. Wow, I'm so we, glad we to hear a, you guys say a, that. a world-class okay. cryptanalyst in our team and I have absolute faith in the level of security that we're building into our core platform from the ground up. We're designing for it to be hack proof from the ground up. What these experts say is that it's impossible from preventing a hacker from getting into your car, but you can then prevent him from doing any damage. They call it early detection and mitigation, and it's all about having the right keys to get in. The way I describe it, it's like catching a hacker, locking him in a metal cabinet, and then putting that in the basement. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.